Raise their ram and right now you're joined live by our guest that is Dr. Alice Oding Odingo. Dr. Tari, good morning, how are you? Good morning, you're fine, thank you. All right, let's just start, before we get to understand how this climate change might have affected and resulted to different health challenges, for the benefit of our viewers, tell us what is climate change and what causes it? Yes, uh, climate change actually is uh, now a global phenomenon which I think every corner of the world, even children, know something about. It's just the long-term changes in weather patterns average over a long time, like 30 years. And then looking at that scenario, there's evidence that climate has changed over the years by increasing temperatures up to about 2 degrees Celsius. In some places like Africa, it could even be more than that. So that is basically what climate change is. And the climate change uh, impacts our lives, our livelihoods. For example, food production, because of failure of rains when we need them, they, they have lowered our productivity in agriculture, leading to, to reduce food production. There are impacts in health that we are going to talk about today that leads to make, make us more susceptible to various ailments. Climate change also, because of pollutants in the air, has compromised our, our health in a different way. And also through intense heat and, and cold conditions, we are now seeing, for example, the situation of COVID in, in Europe, where we say that because of the cold, cold conditions, the, the vi virus was more virulent in those, in those areas. So climate change has got different impacts on our ecosystem and life rules, and one of them actually is diseases that we're going to discuss today. You mean? Dr. Ari? Yes, please. I'm saying when you talk about the difference in climate change, at least being different in places such as the African continent, what do you mean by that? Yes, climate change will impact different areas differently. Like in, in, in the West, in, in, um, in, in lower, so in higher, higher altitudes, they are going to experience increases in temperature and that is good for them, for example, for their food production and others. But for us, Africa, climate change will impact on us negatively because already we have very high temperatures and increases in those high temperatures can only worsen the situation that we are now experiencing. Like we are lucky to find losses in, in agriculture, in food production, that means for malnutrition. We are also going to experience flooding in some areas. That means increase in waterborne diseases and vector-borne diseases for Africa. And, and also because of the air pollutants in the, in the environment, we are going to compromise on our health situations. So for our case, climate change is going to adversely affect us in Africa. Okay, seeing that it's already here with us, we are experiencing it. Do you, uh, we, we are experiencing it. Do you think we will survive climate change? Are we doomed? That is that's a very interesting question <laughs> because um, we we have to survive. There's no alternative for not surviving. And uh, I can say that in, in African countries have tried through global arena of IPs to, to be part of the research and also to implement certain conditions for climate change adaptation. If I may talk about, for example, our own country, Kenya, we, we have a policy on climate change. We, have also have a, we, we also have an action plan on climate change. All these are aimed at trying to adapt to climate change and mitigate some of the effects because we, we have to survive. And then also beyond that, in the country, we have our big four agenda also, where we talk of, we bring on health, food security, manufacturing, and also affordable housing. And uh, for what I want to say is that for us to be sure that we can be able to deal with climate change and health, we have to look at the four types of health. Because climate change impacts on the four types of health. 
For example, the, the physical health, where you feel sick in your body, the, the social health, where the environment plays a role in the kind of disease we experience, and climate change is one of those factors that impact on the environment. And this is where the, we take care of other people's interests. Then we have mental health also, where climate change will impact on mental health because of other, other conditions. And then lastly, we have moral health, which is a bigger problem for us because we have not addressed it and it's, a, it's a, a much serious issue for us. If we don't have that, then even efforts towards climate change adaptation may not work for us. Okay. Earlier on, you had mentioned that there's an action plan to mitigate climate change. Make us understand, which action plan is this? We have the National Climate Change Framework Policy and Action Plan 2018 that the government actually was able to connect different ministries to to mainstream climate change adaptation in different sectors of the economy so that everybody is brought on board. And we have, it, it, it has been a journey when the, the act started, the went into policy, it was a long journey, but at least Kenya has reached to that level. All right, now what about the health challenges that are presented as, as a result of climate change, such as flu and even cold? Could that be as a result of climate change? Yeah, we have we have always had flu. We have always had had some of these some of these respiratory ailments with us. But I think the complication came when we had the COVID the COVID nineteen, where people were wondering whether this is normal flu or it is not not a flu because some people are saying oh this is a common flu other things not. But the the issue here is that as climate climatic changes continue. Our environment changes around us, and maybe our, our immune system is weakened. Because of that, we are more susceptible to viral infections. Like they say in the case of COVID-19, most people who are dying are those who have preconditions. Like they, they, they have respiratory problems and other underlying causes, then they do not survive the ailment. And that means if we have compromised health situation, then we'll be more, more, more susceptible to most of viruses and their effects, even with without climate change. Okay, Dr. even as you talk yeah, about those yeah. respiratory illnesses, at least help us understand, when you talk about this emerging viruses, such as COVID-19, which is what you're battling now, when you look at some couple of years back in West Africa, we had the Ebola virus. Could this be a manifestation of difference in climate change? It could be yes and it could be no. Uh -huh. if, if I may, I may draw, you, draw your attention to, for example, we, before that we, we had things like HIV AIDS virus, yep. which we said, or research tells us came from chimpanzees. Then we, we mentioned Ebola, Ebola was there also. And then, then we have, there's also SARS, which also came up, which was from birds. Then now we have the COVID, say, they say from birds, although not proven, though those are the theories that are going around these diseases. But the issue is, as climatic changes, human beings are moving into virgin environments where they are f falling down trees and getting in contact with some animals, which may be carriers of these viruses. So as, as they, they mingle around with these animals in the forest, which they don't know about, they can pick up some of the viruses and that can be a problem. All right. Now, there's also that question of uh, weather and climate, whether it determines on which places COVID-19 can occur. What is your take on that? Weather and climate. Yes. Yes. The, the, there's, there's a theory again that um, the, the, the virus thrives in a in a cooler environment exactly and that in africa it is warmer and therefore we should not worry more about the virus but i want to say that still little is known about covid 19. Mm -hmm. we do not know much about this particular virus because it, it was, we were so afraid of it mm -hmm. and we brought in so many conditions on board we are tr trying to to resist it one of them was isolation, which has brought in several other problems for us. 
like 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 um, with the children with the families so to me i, I see it is it is still not mature enough to pinpoint really the link between covid-19 and the weather because even here we are it is warm but still we are having some lives lost we need to prove that Okay, just speaking from what you're saying, Dr. Alice, that, does, that, does that then dispel that idea of places where there's high heat, then there's no likelihood of people being susceptible to COVID-19? I, I, I may not say yes and no to that, yeah. but because, like I say, people are still dying even in Africa. Uh -huh. But again, there are also people saying that because the virus is slowly degenerating we may it may soon disappear on its own i think i think we we need more research in that area just to understand the covid 19 but whether it is whether whether it is related to weather or it it or in terms of where it, it came from and also how it is spread but for the time being we are taking precautions hoping that they are working for us for the time being, you're just taking precautions, and that you're saying that there's no like direct link between climate change and COVID-19. But but one thing is clear is that because of the air air pollution, yeah, due to emission of gases in the atmosphere, that alone compromises on people's health, and therefore when they when they contract COVID-19, they are they get more impacted, and that actually compromises their health. They can even die from it. But if somebody is healthy enough, like they say, you are able to resist the disease. OK. Now, even as you talk about air pollution, Dr. Alice, there's that question of now there's been reduced human activities, seeing that most people are now at home or even working at home due to COVID-19. And could that at least uh, have impacted climate change positively in us not having so much air, air pollution and even water pollution as it were? Yes, I find that very interesting. Uh -huh. Yes, because... You know, climate change, like I began by saying, is, is a long-term average of weather. And it takes something at least 30 years for us to say there's a change. Okay. Otherwise, the other things are just daily effects of weather. And uh, this, the COVID-19 is just about three months or so old, or maybe five months old. And uh, the, 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 that impact is not enough to call it, you know, to, to link it with climate change. But we can still use maybe the weather, weather variation. That, that will, but the, the little impact that has been created by isolation, for example, staying indoors, yes. like uh, mm -hmm. uh, less vehicles on the road, less pollutants on our, on, on, on our waters, that is there, but it cannot still create any impact on, in climate change, climate change mitigation. It is too minimal still. All right, now slightly away from matters COVID-19, let's come to the issue of flood, uh, flooding, seeing that in the recent uh, couple of weeks, at least in different parts of the country, we've been experiencing heavy rainfall and some other parts even <coughs> flooding. Could that be as a result of difference in climate change? Yes, mm -hmm. Fl flooding is part of the impacts of climate change that we are likely to experience in this part of Africa. And it is it is normally normal that within April May 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 scenario we normally have high rainfalls in some parts of the of the country, for example in Kenya. And uh, this time it, the rain the rainfall was enhanced, and that's what led to flooding. So that is one of the impacts of climate change. And we could see what devastation it caused to the people that were involved. Like people lost their houses, people lost their property people were you know they even forgot there was there was isolation now they were converged in one places and this has got impacts even on families i have been seeing for example in the media about the teenage pregnancies that you are worried about and this could be even other aspects of health that are indirectly linked to climate change which are not being addressed but we are more worried about teenage pregnancy and not the number of people that could have gotten HIV AIDS even during those problems for isolation and flooding. Right. When you said yes, that it could be as a result of climate change, the issue of that you're experiencing, that is the issue of flooding, then what can we do as a society to curb that? 
yes um when, it, when we when we talk about climate change there are, there are normally guidelines put for us how to adapt like the, we have to take care of our resources the forest we have to minimize waste in the environment we have to use clean energy that is away from fossil fuels and maybe use renewable energy sources like solar geothermal and others so there are many many areas of addressing climate change which i think we are trying to do that's another topic on its own and each, each country for example kenya is a signatory to the paris agreement where they made commitments under what we call independent national determined contributions and each country decides how they want to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions and then at the end of it they're able to evaluate how better, better they are doing it because it's a joint effort you cannot do it alone it's a global problem and must be also addressed globally and locally wow i like what you say that it's a Right. I like what you're saying, that it's a joint effort. Now, in your perspective, do you feel like there's probably something more than the government can do, at least to reduce such kind of issues? And if is there, what do, they, what do you think they can do? For, for the government of Kenya? Yeah. To, to, to deal with climate change? Yeah, because you're saying like it's a joint effort. So what can they do? Okay. For the, the simple things we can start, we can, we can address the use of energy. Which, within, uh, with, with, which is within our means, and the government actually is trying to promote renewable energy and, and, uh, and reduce dependent on fossil fuels. That, that's a, that's a, a positive a positive way of doing it. Secondly, we need to, to preserve our forests because forests are what takes off the carbon dioxide from the environment and gives us oxygen to breathe so that we will clean our hair. So we need to grow more trees and give give our environment breathe, breathe us to clean the environment to clean itself and then and then also apart apart from that in terms of agriculture we can use climate smart agriculture techniques or practices where the, the first thing is to be able to use to use conservation techniques to conserve the soil we are also able to use drought tolerant crops to be able to prevent losses due to drought and then and then also minimizing chemicals in our environment all these work together to deal with climate change all right you've said that uh, especially you know minimizing on cutting down of trees especially in our forest to add to advance to, to at least reduce the adverse effects of climate change so does that mean that that is also a contributor yes that's a contributor because of deforestation yeah we have encroached into the forest and 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 we, because of that there's very there's not enough not enough trees to absorb the carbon dioxide from the environment and that means accumulating within the atmosphere and that is what leads to greenhouse gas emissions or, or global warming that that is actually impacting on climate change all right. Now, seeing that you're someone who has so much knowledge in, in, on, on matters environmental studies, in your perspective, Dr. Ari, what can the global response to COVID-19 teach us about how we handle climate change as a society? I, th I think this is this is a this is a, that's a very important mm -hmm. issue. Yeah. Because uh, when we heard about COVID-19, all of us panicked. And uh, it's like all of us went to our hiding places, and we we, we did not socialize or do anything. And uh, I think we are we are here to know the impact of isolation on our lives. And to me, I think this should not be the trend. We we we, sh we need to live healthy every day, and we need to improve on our health issues. For example, health infrastructure should be there. We need to work on research because we know about these viruses and we know that viruses do not have a cure and therefore by living healthy we can deal with them and when they come you're not very our immunity can be able to resist them we can also create awareness so that people are aware on how they can they can cope with the disease and in case of isolation 
how do we manage livelihoods? How do we manage particularly those low-income communities in, in the urban areas? And, and apart, apart, apart from that, we need to fight poverty because we have seen how the problem of poverty can make control of a pandemic almost impossible. People must eat, people must live from day to day basis. You cannot close industries. And therefore, poverty is an issue that needs to be addressed, among other issues. And then also, we need to map out our natural resource base. In Africa, we are still endowed with a lot of natural forests. And I believe where these viruses, zoonoses, are coming from, there are also solutions to those problems. And therefore, when you, particularly our herbal medicine, if you go and do research on them, how to deal some of the ailments, this this can be done. Sometimes I I am not very sure whether the solution to viruses is just the vaccines. And if it is so, then why don't we make vaccines ourselves? Because by importing them, we are actually contributing to emissions in the atmosphere. We can have people come and make make vaccines here because vaccines are industry, people are creative jobs, getting money. We can have that money here also, create jobs and also take care of our health. So whichever way we look at it, I think we need to do a lot to deal with the, with the viruses in the future. Wow, Doctor, you've, really, you, uh, you've raised up a couple of lessons that we can learn in how to deal with climate change, even as you're learning how to deal with COVID-19. But I just want us to unpack a bit of those um, issues that you've raised. And maybe we can start with the health issue. When you say that we need to start learning how to live healthy, break it down for us a bit. Yes, I, I, I still want to draw you back to, 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 the, to the big four agenda where health is, is a, a very important component. And uh, one, one of the issues I'm doing this is because I mentioned four types of health and social health. Yes. The big four agenda is actually addressing the social health. And uh, we are yet to see the impacts. For example, housing is an issue. In the, in the informal sector, you find one room with the parents and children, and they're living there on daily basis. During quarantine, you can imagine the life those children are going through. That is an issue of housing. There's also education that people need to create awareness and also formal education to be able to know how what to do when there's a virus. So there, there are different aspects of social health that we need to address, even income of the people, so that people can earn a minimum income that they can be to afford, afford health services and be able to live a normal life. But then I also mentioned the moral moral health, yes. which is the biggest yeah. problem sometimes we face today. Because physical and mental health, you can go to hospitals and be treated. But social and, and moral health cannot be treated just in the hospital. Moral health requires belief, maybe in God, to be able to, to do the right thing at the right time. And we every day we see our leaders fighting, we see them, we see corruption, we see abuses, it's because of lack of moral health in our society, not the physical health. And, and all this combined together to bring a wholesome health of the, of the community. And I think for, for the moral health, I think the biggest problem is that we have never, for example, had a church law in this country for so many years after independence. And that's a vacuum that if we don't address health, even if climate change comes with impacts, we will still be vulnerable because even funds brought up to fight viruses will still disappear under corruption because of lack of moral health. All right. Also, you had mentioned that um, even as we deal with climate change, change that it's important for us to start creating awareness on better coping mechanisms. Which coping mechanisms are this and how can we create awareness in regards to this issue? Yes, uh, that, that's, a, that's a very a very important area. Yeah. For, for example, I believe knowledge is power. I, for example, where, where I, I live sometimes I see people walk along along the road and uh, the mask, they actually put it below their chin. If they see a policeman, they put it up. That's a, that's a simple way in which you can tell how people are, but people need awareness. Because we don't wear masks for policemen. 
we wear masks to protect each other. When we have a curfew, we don't do it to, to, uh, to uh, evade police or anybody else. We do it to deal with the disease. Whether we are monitored or not, we do the right thing. Those simple things people need to be told. All right, so now from your perspective then, what can we do to reverse these complicated scenarios of climate change, especially when it comes to viruses? Yes, for, 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 for climate change, like I said before, it, it's going to be here for a long time. Yeah. Because it, it's a long-term average, even for us to remove what's already in the environment, we take a long time for that to change. And therefore, we just have to live our lives to its fullest. And one way to do that is to expect this virus that can come anytime and have structures in place that we can use to mitigate the issue. For example, when we have our own well-defined research structures to deal with these infectious diseases, we need to have enough funding there for emergencies so that we can able to address our own problems without always asking for support from 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 the, from other countries when you have we have put our house in order i believe every challenge is different and we can be able to approach it differently depending on the circumstances all right, that's really a good, a good point there, that it's important for us to put our house in order so that we don't keep asking for help from different places and even different countries, right? That's what you're saying? Yes, yes. All right. Now, we know that as of now, we don't have any clear explanation of the source of COVID-19 as a disease. Is there a possibility yes. of us facing zoonotic fever in the near future? Which one? Sorry? Yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying that right, right now we don't have any clear explanation okay. on the source yes. of COVID-19, like as of now. So is there yes. a possibility for us as people, as individuals, to face zoonotic fever in the near future? Oh, so zoonosis. Oh, zoonotic sorry. fever, the one that stems from animals from and animals. birds. Yeah, sorry, oh, that's okay. Yeah. Fact, that's what I was trying to explain when, when we talked about about HIV, we talk about Ebola, we talk about SARS, which is H1N1 was there before, yeah. and then now COVID. They, they're sort of zoonotic from the knowledge we have at present because they come from animals to humans, actually direct transmission. So those ones, like I said, so long as we still interact with animals from the wild, we are likely to pick viruses from them. So in future, that is possible. But what we can do now is to be able to map out the risks that we have. What risks do we have? And once we know that, we can do research much more in, a, in, in advance so that we're not caught unawares or waiting to do what the West is doing. We must have structures to, to, to research and find solutions to our own problems. Right, thank you so much, Dr. Ari. Now, for, just for the benefit of our viewers, zoonotic fever is the disease that is caused or passed from animals or even insects to human beings. And an example of that could be animal flu or even bird flu. And just what you're trying to find out from our guest there, that is, that is Dr. Alice, is whether or not we might be faced with zoonotic fever in the near future, given the fact that we don't have any clear explanation of the source of COVID-19. Now, Dr. Ari, coming back to you, we had talked a bit about um, clearing up of forests, which is, uh, which, which also has negative impact on climate change. But when you talk about that clearing up of forests, when you talk about people using such places as, uh, as uh, settlement areas and even places to just for their agricultural capacity, is there a possibility that some viruses are being released from such areas? Yes, yes. When, uh, when every time we open up a new, a new place, you know, the way our ecosystem works, they are always occupants of every ecosystem, isn't it? Uh -huh. So even if it's a forest, there are animals there, there's wildlife there. So that, 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 that happens if, when you clear land for agriculture, then we are able to, to get in touch with the animals there. And also, we are also removing trees that alone has caused a problem, for example, with malaria. Because malaria initially was confined to certain altitudes. But because of encroachment of agriculture, of people into 
into higher altitudes and deforestation, now there's what we call highland malaria, which is actually affecting, other, for example, in Kenya, we have Kisi, where there's highland malaria, and this is more virulent than the normal malaria that we have, because initially the people do not have immunity to, to resist those ailments, and therefore they are more affected than people who have already been used to these particular problems. Wow, you've said also opening up of, opening up of such areas. Then from your perspective, what can we do as a society then to avoid opening up such spaces, given the fact that there's limited areas for people to settle? Yes, for, yes that, is, that is very important. In fact, for a long time, yes. we have talked about reorganizing our space mm -hmm. because the, the, the earth will not change. It is us to change. We, we have talked that we can actually have sections for settlement of people and we can go vertical, let people take their land, make them like cooperatives and be able to cultivate together and live together at the same time free land for farming so that we do not have to clear much forest again but control the clearing plant more trees but still live healthy with the services within these premises in so doing we would actually solve so many problems even for our nation Wow, that's really w well put there. But now, finally, as we come to a close, Dr. Alice, then what can we do to save ourselves from viral fevers? From, from viral fevers? Yeah. I think we just need to be healthy. The, one thing is we can eat healthy so that we, we build our immunity. We can live healthy. We need, we need to have adequate water in our houses, like to wash our hands. We need to we need to have adequate housing that the government has promised us. We hope that in the near future every Kenyan will be provided with or be given opportunity to have a decent dwelling with facilities. And then we also need to have our our environment clean around us generally. So I hope all these things will be will be will be able to have them for each and every citizen of this country. That is my dream. Okay, living healthy, healthy, healthy is very important. Now, what about a research in vaccine and vaccination? Could that be a solution to viruses as well? That, 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 is, that is very important. That would be, uh, I think, 50% should, should go into that attention because vaccines normally help us to build antibodies and having built them in our bodies, then we, we can be able to fight the virus ourselves within our body. So vaccines are important. I know there are many diseases like measles, where students children normally get vaccines. We, we also have we also have others like flu vaccine is there. So, but like I said earlier, if we are to, to, to use vaccines, let us have vaccines made in our countries. Then we know how they are made, we know what is involved, then we can also use them for ourselves. But when vaccines are made elsewhere and brought to us, we do not know what is in, if what is in those vaccines. We do not know even the impacts. And also, we don't want to be the market for people to just make vaccines and bring to us. We can also be our own markets. We can make them, use them, and build our industries, and build, be, create employment, and also keep, keep healthy. To me, that's my approach to vaccines. Right, that is really so nice saying that we can, we, can, we can also make vaccines for ourselves. We don't have to rely uh, on the outside world to do that. Then, do you feel like we can get a lasting vaccine for COVID-19 in your perspective? Lasting vaccine? Yeah. Do, do we need a lasting vaccine? For viruses, we don't need a lasting vaccine. Uh -huh. You just need, once you build the antibodies, then the body will deal with it and the virus can die. Okay. Unfortunately, if some, some are weak, those ones will be eliminated. But those who will survive, they would have survived and therefore they will be strong enough to resist that virus. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Alice Odingo, for your time. Thank you so much, Master.
All right, we appreciate your input. So I've been speaking to Dr. Alice Odingo, a senior lecturer at University of Nairobi on the Department of uh, Geography and Environmental Studies, just helping us understand more about climate change and the emerging health challenges presented in that sector. Our special focus has been on viruses and specifically COVID-19. So that's that and that's where we bring to our close Good Morning Kenya this Tuesday morning. Join us again tomorrow for our next edition of Good Morning Kenya. For me and on behalf of the entire team, we say thank you so much for watching. Till tomorrow, good morning.